and crazy, but I think storing your event is kind of like storing holiday decor. When we do it in a more organized and thoughtful way, it makes the next one so much easier. So that's what we're going to talk about today on the Green Room Central podcast. I am going to record an episode right now and you get to hang out backstage with me and listen and get an early preview of the episode. And so we're going to talk all things wrapping up an event so that it is easier and more organized and even better next time. All right. Thanks for hanging out. Drop comments below and or send me a DM and maybe I can even answer one of your questions while we're live together today. <clears throat> gotta stay hydrated <clears throat> okay it may sound crazy but I think we should think about storing our events kind of like how we store our holiday decor or <laughs> if like me uh, your storage of holiday decor is not as optimal as you'd like it to be yet we could just pretend uh, for the sake of this podcast that we all store our holiday decor kind of like we're the home edit and uh, have that image in our heads as we go through today <laughs> sound good all right so first I have a, a little soapbox moment and I want to share that I think too many event leaders are reinventing the wheel every time they do an event. And I think that needs to stop because we should think about our events as if they are something that we are washing, rinsing, and repeating over and over again. We're getting 1% better every single time. We are polishing and refining, not reinventing. Can I get an amen on that one? <laughs> because when we th when we reinvent every single time it's just so taxing on us and our team and doesn't make our guests our presenters lives any easier either it's it's important to think about an event that we're hosting as something that we're going to do again even if we don't know we're going to do it again but let's do it in a way that we have in our heads the whole time i'm going to do this again and so when we put that lens on it, it helps us inform our decisions and hopefully helps us make better informed decisions where we're thinking, well, what would I do if I was doing it again? What would I do it so that it was scalable, so that it was more easily repeatable, so that it felt more wash, rinse, and repeat? Yes? <laughs> so with that lens on, I'll get off my soapbox and say, I really think that event storage is kind of like holiday decor storage. And when we do it right, it just allows us to get a little bit better every single time. Have it be a little bit easier every, the next time. Have it be a little bit more profitable the next time. So I'm gonna give you six things to do after every event that I think will help you get that little bit better every single time, a little bit easier, more profitable, okay? First, so important, celebrate the win. Gather your team for a meal afterwards, perhaps, but come up with some way where you celebrate the win. Really integrate what you and your team just accomplished and don't let it pass and get right on to the next thing. Like even while you're still physically at the virtual event studio or the in-person event space, like take a beat and celebrate with each other. Because if we don't do that, it just doesn't feel quite as rewarding, rewarding and blissful as it could be. And I just think it's so important to pause. I wasn't always a person who paused and <laughs> celebrated wins. But now, I actually do it every night at dinner. It's one of the things when we go around the table that we say is, what are you proud of today? What win do we all need to celebrate with you? And you should be doing that after your event. I know, I know, you're a seasoned event <laughs> leader, you're, or, or you're a seasoned 
CEO and this is something that's already in your practice and if that's the case this is your gentle reminder to just continue okay first is celebrate the win second is recover it's so important to recover I hope you've planned that time into your schedule I hope you've got several days off after the event and you're not doing anything other than perhaps getting a massage or uh, binging on some Netflix or like taking a casual stroll on the beach, like something that feels restorative to you. Maybe it's ice baths, maybe it's more meditation, maybe it's just having like the best, healthiest foods, time with your family. You know what it is for you and for your body and for your mind. You just did an incredibly taxing like marathon and uh, a wedding all at once, <laughs> basically. And so you need to allow your mind and your body to recover from that, okay? So that's, that's two is recover. Three is do not miss an opportunity to have a conversation with not only your team, but the extended team that helped you with this event to talk about what to do differently and what to do again. Capture that information. Even if you don't do anything with it right now, get it all in a document together in one place. What would we do differently? What would we do again? I promise you, as like impactful as the moment was during your event when that thing happened, it will not be as memorable to you a month from now or six months from now when you do this event again. So capture that information now and do not forget to ask the extended team that helped you. So maybe that was your AV team or maybe that was the uh, banquet manager from the events place that you were at. Don't forget to ask those people. They see events all day, every day, and we miss out on a huge opportunity if we don't tap into that brain trust and say, hey, what, what did you see that we did that was something that could have been done differently or or that we should definitely do again okay so that's number three do again or do differently four is store away the physical goods again just like holiday decor if you have items that you're using every time that you have an event i don't know what they are for you maybe it's decor maybe it's display things maybe it's a special rag that you wipe the sweat off your brow every time that you have an event. I want you to store those physical goods that are used just for your event in a spot, well labeled, clean. I think you get the picture. That's that's four physical goods. Five, I want you to store away all of your digital assets. So we go deep into this in Live Event Academy about folder structures because I just geek out on this kind of stuff, but just at a high level, what I need you to know and do is create a file structure for your event where you're using the same categories and the same file folder names for every single event. It makes it so much easier to find stuff the next time. And then maybe it's a digital background, maybe it's a, a, a printable for your order forms. I don't know what it is for you, but all of those digital goods that <clears throat> you were working so fast and furiously on in the lead up to the event, they could be everywhere or anywhere right now. They might still be with the printer or the, uh, the digital creator who made them, but every virtual asset, let's get our hands on those, let's get them stored into folders that are clearly labeled, same labels, same folder structure, every single event. Organize that stuff. You will be so thankful and save your team so much time if you direct them now to go gather up all that stuff. Give them the space and time that they need after the event to go capture it all, get it organized, Save it away so that next event, you don't have to pay another vendor to go recreate something. I've seen this time and time again, and it just it blows my mind. <laughs> Let's save this stuff. 
Let's save ourselves some money so this event doesn't cost as much to put on the next time and also make our lives a little bit easier, right? 1% better <laughs> every time. And then, so that's five is virtual storage. Six is reconciling the budget. High level here, I need you to be, to be managing the budget on in some sort of digital format that allows you to compare event over event, category by category. For me, I love an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> I really love a good Excel spreadsheet. I love having categories, food and beverage, transportation, virtual studio, whatever the costs are but make a whole bunch of those categories. Use the same ones every single time. I will give them to you inside of Live Event Academy. But use the same categories, make a spreadsheet, reconcile, take the time to reconcile the budget. Capture all those expenses that just flew during the event at the last minute just because they had to. Let's, let's get all of that documented so that we can compare event over event. It really, really helps to see the numbers so we can assess what percentage of the budget is being spent here. Is that, is that the percent that we wanna be spending there? Um, do we need to be spending more here to kind of alleviate some pressure or make things easier? I don't know what it is gonna be for you and your team and your event, but we won't know until the, the numbers are there. So get detailed and keep a budget spreadsheet by category and and then save that into that same digital asset storage where you saved all the other digital assets we just talked about in number five so that it's easy get to get to and compare for when you get to the the next event because the next event will make it so much easier because you can be like oh yeah, that's how much we typically spend on this thing. Well, now I probably don't need to go get so many bids this time because now I'm aware of what this thing costs us and I can just put that plug in because it's going to probably cost us about the same amount this time. Makes everything so much easier and faster. Think, wash, rinse, repeat. Yes, I know I'm on a soapbox and repeating myself today, but I'm passionate about helping you Get your event to a place where it doesn't feel so hard. It's less effort and it's more profit. Yes. <laughs> Thanks so much for hanging out today. I appreciate you. Make it an outstanding rest of the week. Take care. Hey, we did it. We got another one. And I did it before I have to get to school to pick up my kiddo. <laughs> Yay me. Now I'm going to get in the car and race over there. And then I think I'll come back and record all the intros and outros. But thank goodness I got these done. I'm excited. You'll hear these in January. Questions, comments, drop in the comments or in my DMs. Take care. Make it an outstanding holiday prep weekend. <laughs> Aw, thanks for hanging out, Stephanie. I enjoy you. <laughs> I don't have any coffee, but you know what I do have? I have my, um, I have my smoothie that uh, was supposed to be breakfast, but it didn't get made until the afternoon. So I'm going to finish that and take it with me in the car. Although Cliff says no smoothies in the car because I spill. So I better get chugging. All right. Enjoy the sunshine. I hope it's sunny where you are, too. <laughs> I'm just loving it. We don't get so much blue sky in Portland, hardly ever. And I was out driving this morning and the mountains are out and it was just the best thing ever. All right, let's do coffee sometime soon. Take care.